Hey, how far might an object fall in one second? We can use this equation. D equals one half a t squared. D stands for distance, A is acceleration, T stands for time. We drop an object, the acceleration is going to be due to gravity. And we want to know how far will it fall in one second. We can do this. The acceleration due to gravity, we'll round it up to 10 meters per second squared. The time we're looking for is one second. If we want to calculate how far it falls in one second, we do this. One half times 10, which is 5, times 1, times 1, last I checked, is 5. 5 what? Distance? 5 meters. Okay, so this equation tells us that an object falling due to gravity in the absence of air resistance, after one second, will fall five meters. Wow. Well, let's put this equation, our guide to thinking, to some actual use, shall we? For example, let's draw Earth. Now, you might know this, that Earth is round. And because it's round, it has this curvature. But you might not know what exactly the dimensions are of that curvature. Well, you're here for information? We got some for you. Let's say you have a laser beam right here at the level. And we shoot out that laser beam on the level. Hmm. The laser beam you know is going to go straight. But the curvature of the Earth, it's going to curve downward. How far will it curve downward? Here's the information. We've got five meters after eight kilometers. You've got to go a distance of eight kilometers, and you'll find that the Earth curves downward by five meters. Wow. It'll be different on different planets, but this is what we have for our planet with its particular size. So let's replace this laser beam with a cannon. And the cannon is going to shoot not a laser beam, but a cannonball. It's going to shoot outward from that cannonball. Pick a number. How fast? Two? OK, two. Two what? How about two kilometers per second? Yeah, that's right. After one second, it will travel two kilometers along the length of this laser beam. And that would be right about there. But you know what? The cannonball is shot outward. Does that mean that it's free from gravity? Does gravity take a holiday on objects that are moving sideways? No. Gravity is always acting, whether it's stationary or whether it's moving sideways. Doesn't matter. How far will that cannonball fall after one second? That's right, by five meters. So here's going to be the trajectory. Oh, the ground is in the way. So what you're going to have to do is dig out some of that ground with a handy dandy bulldozer. Five meters deep, a meter is about this long. So multiply that by five, and that's about how deep you're going to have to dig. And this is the trajectory we'll get, something like this. The cannonball will drop by five meters after one second, traveling outward by two kilometers at two kilometers per second. Great. Pick another number. Four? OK, four. Four kilometers per second. All right, we're going to shoot it out now at four kilometers per second. How far along the laser beam will it get after one second? Four kilometers per second. That means it's going to get right about to there, four kilometers distance. So it goes out to here, but is gravity acting on it? 
Absolutely. How far will it fall after that one second? Five meters. So it'll, uh, the ground is in the way. So you pull out your handy dandy bulldozer and you bulldoze out some earth and you now have a clear path five meters down for that cannonball to shoot out like this. And notice that the curvature of the trajectory widens out as the cannonball moves faster. In either case, after one second, it always drops by five meters. Pick another number. Six? Okay, six. Six kilometers per second. We're going to shoot that cannonball now out at six kilometers per second. How far along this laser beam will it travel after one second? Six kilometers. So that's going to be right about there. Yeah? But gravity is still acting on it, right? So how far will it fall after one second? Five meters. So it's going to... Oh, look at that. It's going to fall right about there, but you notice that you don't have to dig out as much ground anymore. Huh. So the trajectory will look like this, a bit wider of a trajectory as it falls five meters. You know where this is going, don't you? Yeah, pick a number. How about eight kilometers per second? How far will it go along this laser beam after one second? You got it, out to here eight kilometers. But does gravity take a holiday on things that are moving sideways? No, it doesn't. It's going to fall. How far will it fall in one second? Five meters. The equation is our guide to thinking. It falls five meters to be right there. And you find you don't even need your bulldozer anymore. There's no earth to dig. Let's look at the trajectory going to be something like this. And wow, check this out. The curvature of its trajectory matches the curvature of the Earth. That's interesting. And it hasn't touched the ground. It missed the ground. Is it falling? Absolutely. It fell five meters after one second. What about the next second? Well, because it missed the ground, it's going to keep on going, and it's going to just keep going straight out like this. But wait a second. Gravity doesn't take a holiday. It's going to fall by five meters, won't it? So it falls by five me. Oh, it missed the ground again. Wow. So let's look at this from a wider point of view, all right? And we've drawn the large planet right there, planet Earth. And up on the North Pole, we place a cannon. And the cannon shoots out the cannonball at two kilometers per second. Now it shoots it out at four kilometers per second. Now it's six kilometers per second. How about eight kilometers per second? You got to move the cannon out of the way. And you move that cannon out of the way, and you will find that this cannonball goes round and round and round and round. There's nothing to slow it down. Except eight kilometers per second corresponds to about 17,500 miles per hour. Have you ever driven down the road and stick your hand out the window at 17,500 miles per hour? Probably not. This is very fast. And at that speed, the air resistance is going to be so significant that frictional forces will, will cause it to burn up. Anything moving at this speed eight kilometers per second, through the atmosphere tends to burn up. Not good. So that's why 
a rocket ship, when it takes off, you'll see what it does is it tilts sideways. And those engines do everything it can to get it above the atmosphere. Why? Not to escape gravity, but to escape air resistance. Up above the atmosphere and turns itself sideways like this, engines cranking to get it up to eight kilometers per second, 17,500 miles per hour. And you enter this state we call orbit. This, my friends, is orbital velocity. And so what you've got here now is your satellite or space station or what have you going round and round and round. It can turn off its engines. Why can it turn off its engines? Because there's no wind resistance to fight against. And Newton's first law, things in motion tend to stay in motion. Unless there's something to slow it down, if there's nothing to slow it down, it's going to keep going round and round and round. And at eight kilometers per second, it takes about 90 minutes to go around once. That's pretty fast. Is there gravity up there? Absolutely. Is it falling? Absolutely. It's falling five meters every second. There is certainly gravity up there. It's falling like this. It would go straight, but it falls down. 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 And if it weren't for the gravity, it would just go straight. It would be goodbye. Gravity is perpetually pulling it back down toward it. It's falling five meters every second. Now, say you're an astronaut within a space station that is up there in orbit. Are you free from gravity? No. But are you weightless? Yes. What do we mean by weightless? What we mean by weightless is that there's no support force. Say you're on a high dive. You're about to jump off. The high dive is supporting you. There's a force of gravity downward on you and there's the support force upward on you. There's no net force in that case, so you're not accelerating. But the moment you jump off the high dive, there's no more support force. There is a net force downward. It's the force due to gravity. And you fall and you feel, whoa, like on a roller coaster, your stomach kind of lifts up and it's like, whoa, boom, splash into the water. But if you could push yourself sideways at a fast enough speed, and above the atmosphere, that's what you got when you're in orbit. You're not free from gravity, you're free from a support force. Cool. Which brings up a question. What would happen if you traveled faster than eight kilometers per second? Ooh, good energy to you.